So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on configuration management inside of 3D Experience. And before we jump into the day's topics, uh, I'd just like to take a brief moment to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Nick Gaffari. Uh, my picture is in the bottom right corner of the screen there, in, taken in full COVID era in my home office. I'm part of the product lifecycle management team at the Solid Experience Group, formerly known as Mechanica Solutions. And my team and I have been working almost exclusively with uh, the tools within the 3D Experience platform uh, for the last six years. In that time, uh, we've implemented, consulted on, trained on, and customized the 3D Experience platform for our customers all across North America, across a wide range of industries. And one of the things I find really compelling about the 3D Experience platform is this aspect of configuration management that it offers. Um, for my money, um, I believe that configuration management on 3D Experience is absolutely one of the best tools on the platform. Um, it allows you to plan your full range of product offerings, uh, define all the valid choices that you're going to offer your customers as someone like a product architect or product manager. And at the same time, it cascades down to design and manufacturing to give everybody across the enterprise full visibility of the product offerings um, and have them at your fingertips and actually work in the context of a full definition of content, full configured product. And, and that's what we're gonna dive into today with, uh, with the topic of the day with this webinar. We're gonna talk about configured product development as a process, uh, the benefits of uh, configured product management and why it can be crucial to your enterprise, whatever it is um, that you may be producing or whatever it is you do. So the agenda for today's webinar is, is relatively simple. Uh, simple. We're, uh, we're already past the first point, which is our, our friendly introductions. And then we'll, we'll briefly take a minute for, for those of you who aren't as familiar with the 3D Experience platform, maybe you've heard of it, but you haven't seen it, you don't know what it's all about. We'll summarize it for you real quick. And maybe at that point, we'll go through a quick walkthrough of what it looks like live, but we'll have a live portion at the end where you'll, you'll get the, um, the hands-on view of the software. And once we do that recap, we'll, um, we'll spend a little bit of time uh, We'll, we'll stay within the slides for a little bit longer. We'll spend a little bit of time to talk about configuration management as a process, as a concept, and, and really go over why we're talking about it today. Because it's important to conceptually take some time to, especially for something like configuration management, to talk about uh, conceptually about the benefits. Because when it comes to something like this that's a little bit more abstract, it's a process, a way of working. Sometimes uh, without talking about the why, without discussing the benefits that you gain, it's easy to dismiss the big picture. So configuration management involves a lot of planning, a lot of planning your definition of success, planning your product offerings, which then helps you immensely downstream when you're executing and delivering on your products. So we'll go over that in a good amount of detail. And then um, finally, once we're, once we're done covering all of that conceptually, going over what configuration management is all about and how it can be so crucial, uh, we'll load up an example in a live 3D experience environment and walk you through uh, visually the tool uh, in the context of configuration management, how it works, uh, going over the topics that we discussed conceptually, but, but in, a, in a live example uh, with the real software um, in the perspective of a product manager that's configuring your product offerings and the rest of the users that are gonna be interacting with and using your configured products on the platform. Now, I, I'm using the word configurations a lot. And I should just mention quickly before, um, um, before we jump into the rest of the presentation, that for those of you listening who may be SolidWorks users, who use configurations in SolidWorks, because SolidWorks in the CAD, you have like a tab where you can define different um, CAD-based configurations. Uh, what we're talking about today is something completely different. In 3D experience, when we talk about configurations, we're talking about the various product offerings that you make available to your customers. And the perfect example is, for example, if I'm making cars, when I sell my car in the UK region, my steering wheel has to be on the right-hand side. They drive on the opposite side of the road there, right? So when I, when I build my product offering and when I select the, the options for region uh, and country UK, I will not allow the selection of the left-hand side drive in this region because cars don't drive that way, for example. That's, that's the example there. Um, and then once we're finished with the live uh, demo portion, then we'll have ample time at the end for, for questions and answers. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. So 3D experience, you may have heard of it. Um, 
but sometimes it's it's not so easy to, to, to phrase into words what it's all about, right? Um, so if you're not entirely sure about what 3D experience is, uh, it's definitely much simpler than you think. The 3D experience platform, which is represented by the lovely the so compass logo that you may or may not have seen is a web-based software solution that brings together the whole portfolio of Dassault's products in one place. So Dassault system has all kinds of product offerings, right? They've got all kinds of software that they've developed over the years, the different CAD tools like Katia and SolidWorks. Uh, they've got CAD tools specific for designing molecules and cells inside of Biovia and Geovia. Um, there's different tools that allow for manufacturing, planning, and machining um, for simulation uh, analysis uh, FEA type stuff uh, product data management change management configuration management all of those things uh, that were individually uh, different software suites Dassault has taken all of those core technologies and brought them together in one place under one data model so now whether it's CAD tools or anything that we discuss manufacturing planning machining software whatever analysis it all exists now on the 3d experience platform as roles that you can get assigned that basically just shifts the the applications that are available to you within one data model and what's so great about that well imagine for a second i have a, a company consisting of different people so i have a designer um, a bomb manager and a manufacturing planner at a company if I'm working in 3D experience as a CAD designer, I fire up my CAD tool and I save my CAD model, my assembly in 3D experience. Then in real time, immediately, if I'm a bomb manager, that assembly, this, for example, this drill that's on the screen here, I can look at it in a parts list view. I have the parts list that's directly coming from the engineering data that was saved. And there I can adjust quantities, I can swap out components, I can uh, define alternates, I can define part numbers um, directly on the live data that was uh, coordinated by the uh, design engineer. And then downstream in manufacturing, I can consume that same data and build my manufacturing plan. I can take this and deconstruct this into where is it going to get assembled? What are the uh, different assembly processes that are going to take place to, to make this from raw materials into a final product? I can build work instructions and then send that out to a factory floor. All that end to end in one place without having to exchange uh, files, from different softwares, no emails shooting around asking what's the latest data, no need to have a dozen tools to interpret a dozen different file formats because everything's in one place on one common data model uh, in real time. So that's the benefit of 3D experience in a nutshell. That's what it's all about. And within that platform, that collection of all these different tools that are brought together under one data model, under one umbrella, uh, we're going to be going into configuration management. So configuration management. What is it all about? Well, it all starts with the individual. It could be you, it could be me. And every single one of us wants something, right? A certain way. Whenever we're buying anything, we're saying, you know, I want this, but I don't want that. And you might want that, but not this. And that manifests itself kind of in every industry, right? So you can think of like when you're buying an iPhone, you'll buy, you know, one with a, a higher memory storage, a better camera, um, different colors. But it's not just in, uh, in high tech or consumer products. It can also be in, in industries like aerospace and defense or industrial equipment where you're, you've got a massive amount of customization of tailoring, um, configuring products to meet your customers' needs. And you think of cars too. When you buy a car, yours and mine are not gonna be the same, are they? If we both decide to buy a Volkswagen Golf, maybe you decide uh, to go with leather seats, maybe you want all-wheel drive, sports package, uh, et cetera. People demand choice. And as companies, we aim to offer this kind of choice to the customers. Um, but we don't always do it. And why, why wouldn't we want to do it? What does offering choice do um, to make things complicated? When you think about it, you know, if we take an example of, uh, we've got uh, just a graph here that we're going to go through uh, with on the uh, this axis, we'll, we'll go through volume and cost in, in a certain way. And on this axis here, we'll have ranging products from like a standard, unconfigured, uncustomized offering to more and more specialized products on this side. If we mass market something, um, generally speaking, you want to get, you want to push as much product as possible, right? So you want to be uh, on the left side of the curve so you can get as much volume and, and get as much revenue as possible. So why would you 
want to go here where you're likely to, to push less volume, right? Well, the truth is when you start offering more specialized products, you can, you can charge more. So people are willing to pay more, a higher price for more specialized, more personalized, higher quality products. But also there's fewer customers this way. So you, you'll, to find the middle ground here, you want to be able to charge the higher prices, but you also want to increase this volume a little bit. Um, so we'll want to change this graph a little bit from, from that basic point. But then there's another challenge, right? You can't just jump in and say, okay, let's do it. We're going to start offering more specialized products. Because that often means, you know, when we start adding complexity to our process, then it becomes more expensive for us to, to manage it as well. Our costs go up when we start to do that. And here we have that represented by this red dotted line here. And in reality, this would probably even overlap uh, the higher prices that we would offer, and it may, might completely just offset the, the, the margins. So where's the sweet spot? Where's, how, how can we take advantage of the higher prices that we could charge here with more specialized products without digging so much into our profit margin? And the answer is with modularization. You can, with configuration management, you can introduce a whole new approach where you can get to this side of the spectrum, where you can charge more, deliver superior, more specialized things to people, um, but also bring down the cost and complexity because of the introduction of this new process. Because at the end of the day, people don't want this. People don't want that standard thing that everybody's got. They want something that's here, that's specialized, that's customized for them. And if you can give them that in this range, then you'll get the, the profit margins that you're looking for. And then, you've, then you're really competitive. And that's, that's what configuration management in a nutshell, that business-wise, that's, that's what it's all about. So instead of having one product for everyone, um, with configuration management, we aim to have one product for every one individual. So for one individual, one product, everyone wants their own thing. How can we deliver all these combinations and still do it cost effectively? We do it through modularization. So throughout this webinar, we're actually going to be playing the role of a product manager at a drone company. We make these quadcopter uh, drones. We make and sell these quadcopters for our customers. And we might actually have different product lines too. Imagine maybe we've got you know, commercial ones that deliver packages, we've got consumer ones. And with modularization and configuration management, we can actually do a lot. We can define individual modules, uh, models that have all the different features for an individual model, be it commercial, be it consumer-based, and we can manage all of that. So we'll take this drone that we sell for an example, to show a high-level view of what modularization is all about. So here's the drone that we've got, and in the middle is the drone body anyway. And we've got different cameras that we offer. So we might have different resolution cameras at the top here so we might have you know like a 4k or a, a lower res uh, 720 phd maybe we've got different uh, types of remotes so uh, we've got one with a phone mount that that reads off of your phone another one with an integrated display maybe we offer different propellers with different counts of blades so we've got two or three or four or six whatever and what we could do is we can offer every choice all the time to everyone but that's not where we get the cost benefit with, um, with configuration management. The cost benefit comes in when we restrict that choice in a modular way to say, I'm going to offer this choice here, but when I do, that happens. When I select this camera, I'm not going to allow these other choices. For whatever reason, technology, cost, if it's a marketing preference, whatever it is, you can start now to say, I'm giving you a choice, but a controlled modular choice, a choice um, that's a little bit more controlled and restricted depending on rules and selections that I define based on availability, based on cost, based on marketing preference, whatever it is. And then, of course, once you make those choices, you bring those pieces in and you build your product, right? But you need to have the ability to also do two things. So in this process, we have to ensure that we're reusing as much as possible. We're always redesigning things and reinventing the wheel. Always have to make use of our existing know-how, offerings, and knowledge within the enterprise. So we're not constantly redesigning and rebuilding, number one. Number two, when we're evolving our products, which we're always doing, we're introducing new pieces, we wanna be able to adapt that new thing 
into our model, but also to control when does that new thing get introduced? When does it become effective? Model version A, B, C in 2020, 2021, 2022, et cetera. And if you do those two things, which you can with configuration management, then you've got something good, then you're really rolling. Because when you look at um, the top pressures in industry, we mark them down here. There's a whole lot of stuff that's raining down on you that you need to, to deliver on. So a constant demand to go quickly, go fast, fast, fast. You need to launch products as quickly as possible. You need to make better products constantly, um, more tailored, more customized products, cheaper products. Um, and of course, you need to meet certain regulations, comply with industry or regional standards and practices. And across all industries, you have these challenges and they all have different weightings to them depending on where you work, what you do. But across industries, one thing's for sure, this one right here, um, the ability to customize complex products and do it efficiently is in the mix. It's always up there. It might not be first on the list, it might not be second, but it's, it's, it's always up there. So when we're talking about complexity, when we're talking about highly specialized products or specialized products in general, how do companies normally deal with complexity? Well, sometimes not very efficiently. So let's take this, uh, let's take this example. We're still working with the drone. We're still working for the drone company. So I've got my drone and what do I have below it? I have some kind of chart, you know, some kind of spreadsheet that's tracking all the different choices that, uh, that I want to offer and call it my product offering. But it's not just, um, it's often not just one spreadsheet, is it? It never is. See, there's always something new that gets introduced or something, uh, a customer requirement that comes in that, that necessitates a new one. So what we do, we save as. How many times? Well, it depends. I can have, I can have, this could be, you know, model version A, B, C, you know, this could be the long lasting one. Uh, this could be the lighter one. This could be the one in the US. This could be the one in Europe. And then I wind up with a whole bunch of spreadsheets. And it starts to kind of spiral a little bit because these spreadsheets are used by who in the organization? Pretty much everybody else. Designers, simulation folks, manufacturing, marketing. And suddenly, I don't need to tell you, you've got a mess. We've got a mess on the page. And no wonder it costs a lot of money to manage this complexity. You've got a lot of room for mistakes, a lot of room for delays, a lot of room for people doing the wrong stuff at the wrong time, the wrong place, and miscommunicating everything. And then imagine you need to implement any sort of change and to do it quickly because products are always evolving. Things are always changing, right? And that's going to be a pretty tr tricky thing to do if, if, uh, if this is the way that you're going to do it. And 3D experience is positioned to help here because it eliminates this way of working. In 3D experience, everyone's connected, as I mentioned previously, digitally, working in the same database, as we mentioned. That sort of way of working fosters collaboration. So you have everybody in the organization aligned, able to act quickly, act on the same common data definition, and have full visibility and all the latest data from all parties. Um, and then when we throw configuration management on top of it, we have a process that everyone can leverage to handle this type of complexity in an easy, intuitive way that we'll see uh, in just a minute. So how does it work? Well, configuration management in 3D experience starts with, um, it's, it, it goes by steps. And the first step is planning your definition of success. So what defining what it is, what's this model that you wanna to bring to market? What does it consist of? Everything that it's made up of, what does it consist of and everything that can vary. And that part of the, the process is what we call model definition. And we have an application, a role on the platform that allows you to do this. Then you're going to connect that definition to the things that you're going to design, that you're gonna engineer. And then your designers can leverage tools to help in the design by working in that configured context. So when they're introducing a new part, they know this is gonna be effective at this point in time. They'll be able to instantiate and build those effectivities. And then finally, your production. We won't show this in the demonstration, but I'll talk about it because it's really interesting as well. Because the same type of configuration um, management process that we uh, develop can apply downstream to manufacturing as well. So we can apply uh, those same filters and rules to say, 
in which factory does this get created? Under which assembly line, um, depending on the selections that uh, that we make? So it's um, really, really powerful in that it connects all of these things to give you a process that eliminates that spreadsheet monstrosity that we saw on the previous slide. And it starts with that top part of the pyramid, what we call our model definition. That's where we're setting up our plan. That's where we organize and give everybody across the organization visibility so they can collaborate around that plan. So let's get into the example. Let's imagine this scenario. So we're, we're still working with the drone. We're tasked with making this drone. And I mentioned we were gonna be part of this drone company today, right? So we've, we've decided we wanna offer different choices for this drone. So we've got different color choices. We've got black, blue, red, we've got different camera options that we're offering. So we've got 4K camera, uh, HD, a lower resolution 720 camera, um, different storage options for, for capturing uh, video. And we're offering this across different regions, across different countries. Okay, so that's great. We know that this is what we want to build and these are all the things that, that we want to offer. Great, let's, let's get to it. How do we do it? Well, let's look at traditionally. How would you go about doing it, right? Traditionally, you'd say, okay, well, let's let's go ahead and build them one at a time. You know, customer's going to order, you know, maybe, you know, US. They're going to say, I want the black one with the low res camera and this storage option. These are the things that are going to vary. Great, we'll create that grouping over here. And then we've also got, you know, some some components and some pieces that are going to be common across every configuration, right? We've got maybe the same amount of screws depending on um, throughout. We've got we got screws, we've got supports, we've got uh, maybe the landing section is not changing at all. So we've got, we've got fixed components throughout all these things that are not going to be changing either. So we're going to have a grouping for that over here. But then let's say there's there's a whole bunch more um, orders. What we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to make another group, right? So we'll have another one, a red one here, different uh, different memory capacity, different camera, and so on. And you keep going. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna build all of these assemblies. And maybe you're, you're starting off, you're, you're building all the bills and materials for these things. So you're building a spreadsheet for one, spreadsheet for the other, spreadsheet for the other, spreadsheet for the other. And then you start assigning these to a designer to say, okay, build me this one, build me this one, build me this one. And then you wind up with all of um, all of that duplication of data, you wind up with uh, maybe an absurd amount. Let's say 55. It could be more than that. It could be less. Maybe you don't make 55. Maybe you start off making five or six. But even if you do, you know which six? How do you remember um, what choices you made and, and where they are? Uh, who knows that if you made the right one, if you made like a, a seventh one that no one actually really asked for, how do you communicate that? Maybe it's in a spreadsheet on a drive somewhere you have to hunt for. Uh, and then beyond that, what about all the fixed components? Look at all the duplication of data there is when you work that way. All these parts are the same. So the likelihood is, you know, if you have something that you want to swap out, let's say we introduce this new C6 part, because uh, there's a... Uh, there's a cost performance or an availability benefit by introducing this new part, or maybe there's you know an evolution to um, technologically that we want to implement. What do we have to do? Well, we have to open up uh, everything everywhere and change it in every single assembly that we build uh, to have that consistency. And if I'm doing that, uh, you know, so many times, imagine all the bills and materials I have to update, all the CAD assemblies I have to open. It's just incredibly slow. And that's why at the top here, we wrote the slow company. That's the slow approach and no one actually wants to work that way. Uh, I hope to goodness sake that no one is working that way. But the good news is there's a better way through configuration management, through model definition to eliminate this way of working. So let's look at a faster way of working. We're calling this the fast company. This is how we're gonna do it. So we're going to approach this kind of this, the same way. The, the, this graph is going to look a little bit similar. We're going to have a grouping like we did before. So in the same sense, we're going to have a grouping. And it's going to consist of the parts that vary and then the parts that are fixed. Great. But instead of bringing in a single selection, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in all the selections. All the selections of all the countries that we have to choose from. We're going to bring in all the colors, all the cameras, all the memory options, everything. 
We're going to bring all of this in together in one big group. And this group we call our 150% product definition. So we're going to create one model definition that contains all the variability and all the fixed products, the full definition of content for this model. And then when we want to achieve individual product configurations, we want to build our first drone, let's say this is GX001, um, then it, instead of creating something new, we're going to do uh, an application of what we call filters. We're going to act, imagine there's switches on all of these as we've shown, and we're going to turn the switches on and off to say, okay, this is going to be made up of this, 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 and this. So let's go through. Let's say we're going to make the first one. We're going to say, okay, it's, uh, it's going to be a US model. Great. And then we'll select black as the color. But you know what? When we select black, we've defined as a rule within the organization that when we select black, we don't want to allow you to choose the 500 GB memory option. We only want that memory option perhaps when, uh, when we select blue or red. So we'll turn that one off. That's a marketing preference that, that we don't allow. So I've already limited a choice there. And then, okay, let's keep going. We'll pick, uh, we'll pick the camera. We'll pick the memory capacity. And then the, all the other parts are there and they're fixed. And then we do the same thing for the next one and the next one, and the choices may be different, but we're working on the same data and we're just applying different filters. And I call these configuration filters or effectivity filters. And then if I need to bring in something new, oh what? Then I go ahead and I added that C6 part that was problematic where I had to open a million structures before. I introduce it here now. And what's more, I get to decide when it turns on, when it becomes effective. Product version A, model version B, model version C, all three. I get to decide that. And it's as simple as that. That's the concept of configuration management. So when we look at the comparison of the two companies, we've got uh, the slow company where everything was being recreated every single time. And we had an immense amount of duplication that was taking place in this company. Alternatively, at the Swift company, the fast company, where we're using modularization, we're using configuration management, what happens there? Well, there's zero duplication. All the models and all the, the content that we create is reused and used effectively across all the different product configurations that we build. And that's the benefit. So going from 99% duplication, all that uh, difficulty communicating to 0%. Um, and with that, we're going to actually now jump into the live demo portion of the webinar where we walk through how it works um, within the software. Now, just a, a preface to this, this is a different process, right? So instead of just jumping in and starting to design stuff, you do have to take a little bit of time up front to plan your model definition, to build your product offerings, and then apply the filters. But this is about, you know, making a plan for success, and everybody wants that, right? So we're going we're gonna to see how actually easy it is um, in the live portion of the platform now. So for those of you who haven't seen the 3D Experience platform before, I mentioned it's entirely web-based. So if you decide to purchase the software, you'll get a, a link to a URL and you'll be asked to create a username and a password by some administrator. Imagine you're logging into Facebook or something. So you go ahead and you log in and the page that you land on, it might be blank. You don't need to panic. Um, it's called your dashboard. Now, 3D Experience is unique in the sense that the user, the user interface also is super modular. So depending on who you are within the organization, you can build it any way you want. I can define as many of these tabs as I want, and those tabs can contain different applications depending on what I do. If I'm a designer, maybe I'll want a lot of stuff that allows me to interact with the 3D data. If, someone that's, if I'm someone that's working with the bill of materials, I might choose to have applications in my display that are really bomb centric that allow me to visualize my bill of materials. And um, I mentioned the compass is this, uh, it's the, the Dassault logo that brings together everything, right? Well, it's also where you click to have access to all of the applications that have been assigned to you, all of the licenses and roles that have been assigned to you. So inside of 3D experience, when you're assigned a product, when you're assigned uh, a license, you're actually assigned a, a role that's like a bundle of different uh, applications that are available to you depending on your role within the enterprise. Usually it matches. If I'm a mechanical designer, for example, I have all kinds of tools here that allow me to do mechanical design functions and it'll launch me into design tools. 
if I'm someone that's in manufacturing, I'll have manufacturing specific tools that allow me to do manufacturing planning and so on. For configuration management, we're going to be playing the role of a product manager. So we have a role called product manager that contains a set of applications as well. And we're interested in is our model definition. That's where we're going to be planning our uh, product offerings, as we mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and all the applications that you'll work with in the 3D Experience platform are web-based. So you'll be able to simply drag and drop them from your role, from your product offering onto your dashboard, pin it there, move it around, uh, maximize it, minis minimize it, work with it however you want. Um, completely modular, as I mentioned. Another quick thing to note before we jump into the configuration management uh, tool into model definition is I mentioned that everyone's working on the same platform, right? Um, 3D experience aims as much as possible to be fileless, to be uh, an environment, a database-driven environment where everybody just collaborates. Use whatever authoring tool you're using, if you're using CAD or if you're using some sort of manufacturing uh, definition and planning tool, simulation, whatever, all the data that you create gets stored in the database and then you can grant people different types of accesses based on um, you know, uh, if, if it's for a particular customer or what have you. So if I search for something, I could search for all the products that I have access to in the system. And then I have a search result that will give me all of the um, all of the products that I have access to. I've got a really powerful tagging tool that I can use across all my applications and even in the search to say, filter down these results uh, down to um, only the root products or the leaf node, the end items, the items that, that are um, you know, just parts or the parent assemblies of everything. Um, if, if I have multiple different types of CAD, I could say, you know what, find me KTV5, find me SOLIDWORKS, find me 3D Experience, uh, find me documents. Um, are these uh, parts that we're making or that we're purchasing? I can filter this any number of ways and whatever I'm interested in, I could then find it in the database and drag and drop it into my applications and work with it, regardless of who I am, what I'm doing. If I'm in manufacturing, I'll work with the manufacturing content and I'll build on top of it. And all of it's linked together, everybody's working in the same pool. So where, th where configuration management comes in is now in this model definition application. So in, inside of model definition, I can define all my different model versions so this is going to be all my different uh, product offerings that I'm going to offer. So in this case, we've got a drone, which is our drop zone drone model, for which we've defined all the features and options and variability uh, that we can offer for all of our customers, regardless of what it is they're asking us to, to deliver for them. But imagine this is just one. Imagine I'm, I'm a company that's doing uh, industrial equipment, I don't know, and we've got uh, a model definition for bulldozers, excavators, backhoes, uh, and each one of them has their own definition of variability. Maybe you've got different bucket sizes for, for the excavators. You've got uh, uh, different types of tracks. You've got uh, a different type of motor and different things like that. They vary. And each one of those things can have a definition of their variability. But for this one, let's look closely at our, our drone model definition and what it contains. It contains a bunch of different tabs that summarize what we discussed already, how we're going to define our full definition of this model. So we have this drop zone model A uh, drone, and it consists of different regions that we're going to cater to, that we're going to sell to, the different colors that we're going to offer. So we've defined that we're going to offer red, white, black, blue, orange, the countries that we're going to service. And this is going to be obviously linked to region. We'll get to that when we talk about rules. The different camera options that we're, uh, camera choices that we're gonna offer. I wanna use the word option because we'll get to that. Different types of remotes, whether it's gonna be the standard remote with the mounted phone or the pro with the integrated display. Different types of memory storage capacity, propeller blades as we discussed, battery, and what I've got here, each one of these is what we call a variant. And I'll make the distinction between a variant and an option here, because we're going to get to the accessories here, which are options. The, the distinction is, is important because it, um, it means something different inside of the tool. So our variants are going to be a collection of individual choices that are grouped by something. So for example, a variant would be region and it'll have values such as Europe, Asia, North America that we can choose from. 
So similarly, color is a variant that'll have different values like red, white, black, blue, orange that we'll define that we can choose from when we're building a specific product configuration for a customer. An option is something that you either have it or you don't when you're building your product configuration. So when you're thinking of that car, do I have satellite radio? Yes or no. Do I have a heated steering wheel? Yes or no. In our drone, what we're going to have is, do I have landing gear extensions? Is it going to have the USB card reader? Uh, is it going to have the cleaning kit? Is it going to have a lens hood, hook, uh, hood for the camera? Yes or no. These are the options that we're going to offer. Yes, no. Uh, when we're building the individual product configurations that we're going to be selling to the customers. Now, this is everything that we offer for everything that, that varies within this model. But we also mentioned that you want to have rules. You want to have rules that dictate when a certain selection is valid or not. And we've got different ways that we can define these rules too. So we've got expressions that we can define. And if we look at the expressions, we can see if I, for selection of camera, if I select an 8K camera, that implies that I have to select between the 24 hour and the 36 hour battery. I can't select a weaker battery with the 8K camera. Similarly, uh, with a 4K camera, same thing. However, if I have the weaker camera, then I can I can go one notch lower. I can I can also select the 16 hour battery. So I can define that as a rule. I have a different way that I can define rules as well, where I can define them in a tabular kind of way. Where I could say, you know what, based on country, I want to constrain my choices of color and options for Excel accessories. So I could say, if I'm in the USA, what I'm going to do is when I'm building a new product configuration for the US, if a customer comes to me and says in the US that they want a new configuration, the choice I'm gonna to default to is, is white. And I'm gonna allow them to change, I'm gonna allow myself to change any of these uh, values, but I'll default it to this because that's maybe the most popular choice inside of the US. If I'm in France, maybe for availability reasons, for production reasons, for cost reasons, I'm gonna have a certain color choice that I'm not gonna allow. But I'm also going to have a default because, um, well, this is common across all the orders that we get. So we're just going to make a default for everybody. We can turn it off if we need to, but most of our orders are going to have uh, the optics care package. And in the other countries, there's maybe other things that we're going to limit. We're going to say maybe in India that there's, um, there's two of these that aren't available for whatever reason, one reason or another. In Germany, same thing. In Japan, same thing. So we can define those rules in a matrix tabular view to tell us what is and what isn't a valid choice. And then based on the combination of the variability definition that we define and the rules that we define, we can build our product configuration. So when a customer comes in with a request and says, I want this drone with these features, then we can go ahead and build it. So let's look at uh, a customer that may have demanded the uh, white pro USA bundle. Well, in that case, we built a product configuration. So we selected the region of North America, it's in the USA, color white, uh, with the 4K camera, 24 hour battery, six blades in these options, and so on. We filled that in, that's a configuration that can be ordered now. We need to apply this, generate the bill of materials, send it out, build the manufacturing plan. It's there, we've built it. Say we wanna build a new one. How easy it is to build a new one. Let's go ahead and, and say we got a new request from a customer for a new drop zone model. Of It's going to be orange, it's going to be standard, and it'll be offered in India, let's say. That's what the customer wants. And for standard drop zone India, model. Go ahead and create this. It gets created in the list and when you create it, your options are going to be uh, defaulted to whatever the default values are. So a lot of these are going to be blank. Uh, but we know the customer asked for India, so that's going to be Asia. And when I select Asia, I have the rules, right? And the rules are going to tell me if I'm in Asia, I can't pick France and USA. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so I'm going to pick India because this is for India. Uh, they wanted orange. Um, it's a good thing they wanted orange because I don't actually offer blue or red in India. So we're going to pick orange. It's standard. We're going to pick the standard uh, controller. Um, and maybe for this model, it's going to be the 64 gig uh, memory capacity. 
Um, and with that, with those selections, I don't allow the two blade propeller options. So it's gonna be four or six, uh, and we're gonna select the batteries. And then here we can uh, we can add different options that we're gonna add. So we can say, okay, they're gonna get the lens hood. Uh, maybe there's certain options that we don't allow. So in India, maybe we don't allow the USB card reader. So be it. The customer is asking for these selections. So we're gonna go ahead and build it. And just like that, we've built the product configuration. We're ready to apply it. We're ready to send it out to the customer. So how does this product configuration then link to, let's say the CAD, right? Well, let's say we've got the CAD. I mentioned before that we've got what we call 150% definition of the product. So I find in the system, I'm looking for my drop zone drone CAD assembly or my bomb of, of this uh, CAD assembly here. And I can expand it here. And this is a different application inside of 3D Experience. This is one that not everyone has access to, but um, a very good product called Product Structure Editor, very good for product managers and product architects. Allows you to manage configurations and also have a view of the uh, kind of the product structure, bill of material structure on the left-hand side and a visual of the, the 3D object on the right-hand side as well. And you can see that this drone is actually comprised of everything, every available option. So when you're working in a configured context, your your product that you're managing on the on the CAD side, on the bomb side, comprises of everything. So I've got all the camera options, I've got all the battery options, I've got all the different colored bodies, all the different blade orientations in here. So let's say I want to in the CAD uh, associate individual elements to the appropriate choice within my, my product dictionary. The way you do that is actually very, very simple. So there's a, there's a little tab here called configuration. So you'll select a particular component and then you'll look at edit variance and options effectivity, which opens up a window and tells you, um, or, or allows you to choose. Okay, so for this camera K node, this is gonna be valid for the 4K selection and the 8K selection of camera from my model definition. So I choose when each one of these nodes inside the CAD is gonna be effective by managing those effectivities. Same thing for battery. If I go into its effectivity, it'll tell me this battery eight is effective for the option eight hour battery. Well, that one's pretty straightforward. And this is for the CAD. But imagine I had the uh, manufacturing plan as well. Depending on the choice of region, I can have a different assembly line that this applies to. I would do it the same way. I would basically right click, go into effectivity and say, this is related to the region. Based on the region, this is gonna to go to assembly line A or assembly line B. And once I define my effectivities, then I can apply my product configurations to the 150. How do I do that? Well, we go to tools and we apply a filter. I mentioned we had filters, right? So you click on configuration. And in this case, it knows that the drop zone is linked to, to the drop zone model definition that we defined. And then there's a button that lets us choose all, from all our different product configurations. So this is the one we just created, actually. So this is the drop zone orange standard India model uh, that the customer just requested. So this is the one that we just built that we said is going to be made up of it's orange, it's, uh, it's from the India region, it's uh, um, it's got the four blades, I believe. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select that. And then it'll tell us right here um, that that selection that we made comprises of the standard remote, uh, the four blade, uh, these options, that battery, so on and so forth. We say, okay, that's good. We're gonna go ahead and apply that. And the minute we do, our bill of materials gets filtered down to exactly those selections along with the 3D. So this is my bill of materials. This is, it's, it's already designed, I'm not missing anything. Everything is there. I have the 150% definition that I've now filtered down to a bill of materials that contains just everything that I need for that product configuration. And now I can export this as a spreadsheet and send it out to a ERP system, whatever it may be already available to me. And if I wanna introduce a new piece into this assembly, what do I do? I can go back to the 150% definition, or even if it's in here, I can work in the context of the configuration. I can drag and drop this into my CAD tool, introduce the new piece um, at the appropriate node, 
and then I could choose when it becomes effective. So I can have different model versions representing different model years as well. I could say I've got A, B, C, D, 2020, 2021, 22, 23. And I can say in the same way that I did when I built the effectivity to say this was good for that option and it was good for you know the 8K camera and the 4K camera. I could also say this is good for, for model version A, model version B, model version C. I only have model version A in the system, but you can imagine I can introduce a new part and say, when does it become effective? And I could do that by date as well. I could say this is gonna become effective on March 5th, so-and-so. So there's a lot of flexibility between the effectivities and the configurations that I can build between planning my definition of success and executing it uh, inside the CAD, inside the bill of materials. Now there's actually more that I can show you, but I wanna leave room for questions. So um, that is actually the gist of it, uh, configuration management inside of the 3D experience. And with that, we're gonna go um, Back to the PowerPoint here, to our questions slide, and we're going to unmute everybody. And of course, if there if there aren't any questions, um, that's fine too. You can you can reach us at um, by email at info at mechanicasolutions.com, um, where any number of technical resources, sales resources, can get back to you on uh, anything ranging from you know technical questions regarding anything that we've shown today to you know how much does this particular product cost or that particular product cost or how does it all come together and so on and so forth oh you mentioned the manufacturing thing i'm interested in that i want to see that uh later on something like that then we can we can definitely address uh, those questions as well so okay i think that just about does it um there weren't any questions that came in um but going forward if 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 Anyone does have any questions, it's going to be info at mechanicosolutions.com. Email us there. Um, we'll answer any hour of the day. Um, and it's it's been a pleasure to have your time, to have your ear this afternoon. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. I hope that you were able to get something out of it today to understand this process of working, this way of working with configuration management. Um, We've had a lot of success in the past implementing this type of methodology for our customers, um, and it works exceptionally well. So, uh, thank you for your time once more, and uh, I believe we're gonna we're gonna call it here.